Chad, I didn't think I could do it. Trail them for a half a day, Captain. They're headed north, all right. There ain't no question about it. What about the wagons? Oh, we took them as far as Gardner's Fort, sir. They're well on their way by now. All Comanches, Joe? Uh, and some renegade Kiowas, as far as I can tell, sir. Well, you better get out after them. Get out after them? Captain, we've been in the saddle for five days. And you're just liable to spend five more. Get your gear together. Where's uh, Reese? Well, the last time we saw him, he was over in the stable, sir. Yeah, you know, Captain, he hadn't said three words since yesterday. He's, he's acting awful peculiar. Captain? Oh, uh, Reese, I was just going to send for you. Pull up a chair. No, thanks, Captain. I, I came to report for sick call. And just what part of you is sick, Reese? I got a toothache, Captain. When did this convenient toothache begin, Reese? What do you mean, convenient? Captain Pomeroy? Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm Mrs. Elijah Cook, and this is Mrs. Bates. Uh, I'm pleased to meet you, ladies. Uh, uh, what, what can I do for you? Well, Captain, we've come to ask your assistance on a matter of great importance. Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, our pleasure, ma'am. Our pleasure. Now, uh, now what seems to, to be the problem? The problem, Captain Parmalee, is that we have lost Mr. Pringle. Uh, Mr. Pringle, I, uh, I don't believe I know the gentleman. Well, as a matter of fact, none of us really know him. That is, we haven't met him yet. You see, he's come all the way from London, England, and he was supposed to arrive by train at the Gutters Gulch Depot to the north yesterday. And he didn't show up? No, he didn't. We wired to Chicago to see if he'd left there. Which he had. And, uh... Who is this Mr. Pringle from London, England? He is Laredo's first schoolmaster, Captain Pomeroy. A schoolmaster? Yes, Captain. In case you haven't heard, we citizens of Laredo have spent great time, money, and effort securing his services. As a matter of fact, I, I have heard something about it, and I'd, I'd like to help, but I'm afraid that my men are needed for more important assignments. Captain Pomeroy, what could be more important than education? Well, Mrs. Cook, she's right, Captain. Education is mighty important. Reese. Well, I mean, after all, that poor schoolmaster, he could have he could have gotten some kind of trouble or something. Uh, very well, ladies. I'll uh, I'll see what I can do for you. Oh. We'll be eternally in your debt, Captain. Yes, thank you again, Captain. Dave. Yeah. Uh. What are y'all staring at me for? Reese, will you ever learn to shut your mouth? But, Captain, it's true. Education is mighty important. Mighty important. And, and getting that high-class schoolmaster here to Laredo all the way from London, England. Now, now that ain't something you can just shrug off. And I'll bet you they ain't nobody can beat an Englishman teaching English. Oh, I'm glad you feel so strong about that. Because if you come back here without him, you're going to have stable duty for six months. Me, Captain, but I got to do that. Not anymore, you don't. Well, why can't you send Chad or Joe? Because they're just about to start tracking some renegades that have been raiding south of here. And, of course, you didn't have any idea that we were being sent out on an assignment when you dreamed up that toothache, huh? Didn't know nothing about it, and my toothache... Ain't no dream. Reese, go find Mr. Pringle. But, Captain, I gotta... Reese, get going. Oh, I never thought any of you would be the kind to turn away from a friend in pain.
practicing. He's what? You heard him moaning. Ain't nobody ever hurt that bad. Well, he's practicing like them actor fellas. How is he ever going to get any sympathy out of anybody unless he puts on a good show? Oh, that's true. That's I true. ain't practicing. I ain't putting on no show. Oh, he says he's not practicing, Joe. Well, he must have just finished practicing that. No, you two wiseacres wouldn't believe I was hurting if I had 200 Comanche arrows sticking out of me. Oh, I'd believe that. Well, I would, too. Reese, we'd believe that. Yeah, a pair of hard-hearted, no accounts, got no more feelings than a... Got no dad blame feelings at all. Get them pinchers. Huh? Get them pinchers. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go. Hmm. I knew a fella had a toothache once. What did he do about it, Joe? Well, he did what anybody with a genuine toothache could do. He went over to old Lyle Anderson, the barber, and got him to yank it out. Yeah. Lyle fell off his roof and busted his right arm. That's why he ain't fixed my tooth for me. You know, I thought Lyle was a left-handed tooth puller. Well, he ain't. You know, Joe, I got an idea. I'll, I'll bet you could pull his tooth for him. Well, I have pulled a few teeth in my day. Yeah, horses' teeth. Well, now, Reese, they're just the same as people's, only even bigger. Well, now, looky here. Reese, stand up and let me have a look, will you? Well, you come on, Reese. Just let Joe at least have a look. Well, all right. Open up real wide now. That's it. Just open her up way... Oh, up. no, you don't. You ain't looking in my mouth, that thing. Well, all I wanted to do was help, Reese. Oh, sure you do. Sure you do. Just never you mind about my toothache. I'd rather have my scalp lifted by an Apache with a dull knife. Think you can hold him, Chad? I reckon. Nope, you ain't holding nobody. And you ain't never had a fight like the fight we're gonna be having. You take one more step toward me. Well, now, Reese, what is a friend for if he ain't there when you need him? Now, I'm warning you. Just back off. Oh, Reese, don't be such a baby. I you. said I'm warning. Get up, back off. What are you three doing? You and Chad figure those renegades are going to set up camp and wait for you to go after them? You should have been in the saddle five minutes ago. <clears throat> Reese. Well, uh, I'm just about ready to be on my way, Captain. Yes, sir. I won't be but another minute. Make it a half a minute. Yes, sir, Captain. Now we never really will know if old Reese has a toothache. What do you mean, Joe? We, we got his word for it. You know what that's worth. Yeah, well, just let one of you two be hurting sometime and see who walks away from you laughing. Me, that's who. You can bet your saddle blanket on that. Charge here? What do you want? My name's Bennett, from Laredo, Texas Ranger. So? So I want some information. About what? Not about what? Who? English fella supposed to arrive here yesterday. Well, I told them fellas that was here yesterday, and I'll tell you now that I ain't seen this Pringle fella. He never got off the train. Well, he got on the train, I'll tell you that, so he's got to be somewhere between here and Chicago. All I know is he didn't get to this depot. Well, that ain't the railroad's responsibility to keep track of its passengers. Yeah, but we can't wet nerf them, that's for sure. And just who is this fellow that gets the Texas Rangers all worried about him? Well, now that you ask, I'll just tell you who he is. Maybe you and your railroad don't realize the seriousness of this situation. Well, uh, uh who is he? Well, he's just about the most important man ever to come through these parts. The most important, influential man ever to hit Laredo. Yeah? Yeah. Why, he's so important, I can't even tell you who he is. But I'll tell you this. If he don't show up soon, the folks in Laredo just liable to come out here and, and tear up a few miles of your tracks. Uh, I wonder if I ought to wire the home office about this. You mean you ain't already? Excuse me a moment. Uh, just a minute, fella. Just a minute. Yes, but I wonder if I... Uh, and you say he's a very important man? Well, would they send one of their best rangers out here to find a nobody? Pardon me, but could one of you gentlemen direct me to the nearest authority? Where'd you come from, anyway? I have been walking. Walking? Since yesterday. No, the next station up the line is 120 miles, man. You didn't walk that far. No. I believe the train left me 
approximately 40 miles ago. Left you? Well, obviously, there was a misunderstanding between myself and the conductor. If I recall correctly, I asked him if Gutter's Gulch was the next scheduled stop. He assured me that it was, and sometime after that, the train did stop, so I got off. And a few moments later, the train pulled away, leaving me in the midst of uh, nothing, just rocks and dirt. Now, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yesterday, when that train was here, the engineer told me he had to stop and drag a drunk Comanche off the track. So, you got off in the middle of nowhere. Boy, that's just about the dumbest thing I ever heard of. Where are you from, anyway? I am from London, England, sir. London, England? You're not Pringle. I am Pringle, Jonathan Pringle. Well, you don't show too terrible much sense to be the most important man that ever hit Loretto. Well, I don't understand. Uh, uh, just never you mind, Mr. Pringle. Uh, my name's Reese Bennett, and I come here to, to escort you to your new assignment. Oh, how are you? So you just come right along with me. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Boy, you clumsy yahoo, why don't you watch where you're going? Why don't you watch where you park them big feet? <laughs> Mr. Bennett, since you were the party in motion, I cannot help but feel that you were primarily responsible for the mishap. Hmm? He means it was your fault, Mr. Bennett. Now listen, mister, I got a toothache, and I don't need a headache. So if you'll just step aside, we'll be on our way. <laughs> no, really, Mr. Bennett, this gentleman has every right to expect an apology. Will you shut up? All right, let's go. All right, mount up, Mr. Pringles. Uh, do what? I said mount up so we can get out of here. Uh, Mr. Bennett, there must be some misunderstanding. I am unaccustomed to equestrian travel. Huh? I do not know how to ride a horse. You don't? Well, uh, how do you expect to get to Laredo? When I wrote to the Citizens Committee in Laredo accepting the offer of employment, I explained it would be necessary to meet me with a wagon. A buckboard, I believe you call it. The buckboard was here yesterday and you weren't. So you're just about ready to have your first horseback ride. Oh. Come on, put your foot in here. In there. No, 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 the left one, the left foot. Right in there. There you go. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Now, Mr. Pringle, these are the reins. You use them to steer the horse with. You understand that? Quite. All right. Well? Mr. Bennett, I cannot steer this animal till it begins to move. Well, he'll move if you just kick him a little. Kick him? That seems rather unkind. Well, if you say so. No. I think perhaps we had better wait for the buckboard, Mr. Bennett. There ain't gonna be no buckboard. No buckboard at all. Now, come on, get on. Oh. Up you go. There you go. There, hang on these reins. Now, just a minute. There we go. We'll tie you on there so you can't fall. Go on, go. You're late. The train came in an hour ago. No, we had to bring you something to ride, Anson. Took a little longer than we thought it would. The fellow that owned him just didn't want to get rid of him. He could have bought one, you know. Matter of fact, we, we couldn't. Things that bad? Truth of the matter is, Anson, we got just about enough between us to buy you a homecoming dinner. That's all. We kept your gun belt for you, though, Anson. We never even thought of getting rid of it, no matter how lean things got. 
I'm mighty grateful. Sure feel good wearing one of these again. After three years in that stinking prison. Been a rough three years, Ansel. Yeah. Uh, uh, may I ask what is going on? Oh, just shut up, will you? Don't you worry. I know just where we're going to get ourselves a stake. What are you talking about, Anson? Who are them two? One of them's a Texas Ranger by the name of Reese Bennett. A Ranger? What's he doing up here? I'm not sure exactly, but it's got something to do with that dude who's with him. Seems he's a very important fella. The folks in Laredo may pay a few bucks just for his safe return. Anson, you're just not making much sense. That Ranger get a look at our faces and every other Ranger in the territory is going to be after us. Mr. Bennett won't live long enough to tell anybody he saw us, I promise you that. Anson, it sounds kind of personal between you and this fella. It's mighty personal. He was one of the Rangers helped send me to prison. You see you waiting here? Did he remember you? He didn't remember. But he will when I'm through with him, I promise you. Well? Well, what do I do? Just kick him a little. Gently. Oh. Come on. Come on. Well, now, I'll just take that homecoming dinner, and we'll start after Mr. Bennett and his friend. Gringo, I know you ain't never rode a horse before, but if you don't speed it up, we just ain't never gonna get to where we're going to. Oh, stop, horse. Did you say, ain't never gonna get to where we're going to? Or did I misunderstand because you were speaking with your fist inside your mouth? You didn't misunderstand nothing. You heard me real good. Mr. Bennett, if the other citizens of Laredo use this blasphemous form of English grammar, there's, there's no point in my continuing. So if you'll take me back to the station, I shall return to London. Are you making fun of the way I talk? Mr. Bennett, you are not talking. You are grinding words from your mouth like, like hash. I have never heard so many dangling participles, misused prepositions or double negatives in all the years I have been teaching. I don't know what them things mean, and I don't care. And you ain't going to Laredo to teach me anyway. You're going there to teach the kids. Well, I can only hope they have not spent too much time listening to you. And now, since the sun is nearly beyond the horizon, I suppose we must make camp for the night. I didn't plan on stopping, Mr. Pringle. Does that mean you were unprepared to make camp, Mr. Bennett? It means if you hadn't been dragging your feet, we'd have been there by now. Well, I'm sorry. But never having ridden before, I am unprepared to remain a moment longer in this, this saddle. Untie me, please. Mr. Brango. Listen, we're only another three hours from Laredo. Even the way we're moving. And if I don't get me a doctor, a dentist, or something for this jaw, it's gonna swell itself shut! Considering your use of the English language, Mr. Bennett, that could be a blessing. Now, untie me, I insist. Looks like they're gonna settle in for the night. Snail's pace they've been moving, they ain't never gonna get to Laredo. Bennett never will anyway. Make our move now? Nah, we'll wait till it's dark. We'll be able to get in close without being spotted. Wait over there. Coffee, Mr. Pringle. Go on, take it. Wash down the jerky. Careful, it's hot. <coughs> you were unprepared to spend the night. Well, coffee and jerky is all you ever get on the trail, Mr. Pringle. That's all you ever get. Mr. Bennett, must you speak with your finger in your mouth? Well, can I? How it? I got. Now, look what you made me do, Mr. Pringle. Have you been sharing all the food, or have you been holding out? What are you talking about? Well, what's that uh, green material in your mouth? Moss, Mr. Pringle, moss. Why are you eating moss? I ain't eating it. I'm just putting it on my tooth. It's supposed to draw the poison out. It's an old Indian remedy. 
Well, judging from the look of increasing pain in your eyes, I would suggest that you stop listening to old Indians. Oh, you. Gun in the brush and stand up, Bennett. What's happening? Who is that out there? How do I know who he is? Get behind that rock. Move. Go on. What are you going get, to do? Get. Go on. I told you to dump that six gun, Bennett. Stand up where I can see you. Who are you? What do you want? Just do as I tell you and you'll see. You and your friend won't get hurt. I don't believe any of this. You'll hit both of them. The other one's no good to his dead. Ah! Anson! Oh. Oh. That sounds like Anson. Oh. Anson! Is it bad? It ain't good. We better get him out of here. Are they gone? I winged one of them. Guess they had enough, Mr. Pringle. Well, exactly who were they? I don't know who they was. Were? What? You don't know who they were. Well, then why do you keep asking? Mr. Bennett, I have had more than enough of this barbaric environment. Now, I want you to take me back to the railway station. Well, I ain't going to take you back to the railway station, I'll tell you that. Captain Farmley told me to bring you to Laredo, and that's just what I'm going to do. First thing in the morning. Oh. You don't intend to continue sleeping here after what just happened? Very lightly, Mr. Pringle. Very lightly. Did you say something? I said that. Well, good morning. Now. Do we prepare breakfast here or wait till we get to Laredo and eat something civilized? We if ain't. there is something civilized in Laredo. We ain't going to Laredo. Did you say we ain't? Aren't going to Laredo? That's what I. Mm. That's what I said. You're taking me to the railway station? No. There's a little settlement named Daggett, about 15 minutes' ride from here. Doc Severson, friend of mine, lives there. I got to have him look at that. I got to have him look at this tooth. But you said we'd be in Laredo in three hours. I'll be dead in three hours. Oh, Mr. Bennett, you cannot die from a toothache. Well, I can if I want to. Well, I refuse. I refuse to be dragged along on this, this detour. 
Well, you ain't got no choice in the matter. I have no choice in the matter, Mr. Bennett. Well, I'm glad you see it my way. Hey, you! Amigo! The doc in? You know where he is? Well, would you mind telling us? See, he go with a man that way. Uh, how long ago? Oh, not long. Mm. All right, let's go, Pringle. Surely you don't intend to go wandering about looking for the man. Well, how are we going to find him if we don't? Mr. Bennett, I protest. You heard what the man said. He left not long ago. Now, come on, Pringle. <sighs> Mr. Bennett, this has gone quite far enough. Almost far enough. There they are. Come on, let's go. Oh. Hey, Doc! Doc Severson! Catch up to you. That old Mexican back there. So well, look who tagged along. Who are you? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm one of the fellas you were shooting at last night. The rest are inside. I take back what I said, Mr. Bennett. You may die from that toothache after all. So you remember me now, Bennett. I remember you. Good. I wanted that satisfaction before I blew your brains out. I see three years in prison ain't made you any smarter, Jones. I don't get back to Laredo pretty soon. Every ranger in the territory gonna be out looking for me. And him. <laughs> he won't be hard to find. As Soon as the good citizens of Laredo come up with 500 in gold, I'll deliver him safe and sound. And what makes you think they'll lay out $500 to save his skin. I heard what you told that station master. Remember, Bennett? Most important man ever to hit Laredo. Did you really say that about me, Mr. Bennett? Keep out of this, Pringle. Just keep out of it. Those were his exact words, Mr. Pringle. Now, of course, I don't know exactly who you are, but $500 don't seem like too much to ask, considering the high esteem in which... Well, I'd be most happy to tell you who I am, Mr. Uh... Jones. Oh, Mr. Jones, how are you? Uh, my full name is Jonathan James Pringle. I am a graduate of the London University, and I am a fully accredited teacher of mathematics, algebra, grammar, speech, history, geography, and um, all other related subjects. Wait a minute. You trying to tell me you ain't nothing but a stinking school teacher? Sir, I resent that slur against my profession. A school teacher? Ow! What are you trying to do, tear my arm off? I'm trying to find out where that slug is. Your slug, Bennett. Well, you started shooting first. Most important man ever to hit Laredo. All that big, fancy talk. Well, I wasn't necessarily lying. You know, education is a mighty important thing. Well, I can tell you things... Shut up! What do we do now, Anson? Oh, well, one thing's for sure. 500 is too much to ask for the likes of him. 200! Right to Laredo. Tell him what happened. Tell them they can have back their schoolmaster for two hundred dollars. Maybe one hundred and fifty. Two hundred. If they bork, tell them I'll put both of them six feet under. If you say so. Get going. By the way, Mister, how much cash you got on you? Oh, oh twelve dollars. Well, you're gonna have to lie down so I can try to pull that slug out of you. I don't much relish the idea of lying down under your knife, knowing you and him are friends. Well, there's not much you can do about it at the moment. The fact is, if I don't get that slug out of there, you're gonna die. Correction, Doc. If you don't pull that slug out of there with me still breathing, you're the one who's gonna die. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, it'd be easier for him if you got some whiskey. Thank you. 
look steep. But you shouldn't have any trouble, huh, Doc? Wouldn't be the first slug you pulled from a man's shoulder. Anything I can do to help? Yeah, you can shut your mouth for a minute. Well, I'm sorry, Doc. I, I just wanted to make sure you'd be around to, to have a look at my tooth here. Sit down. Mr. Bennett, I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, forget it. You're doing just fine. I don't think the legs on this horse are all the same length. Now, Prangle, you listen to me. You head straight through that brush area, and you'll come to a creek. Now, if you turn left and follow it, it'll take you clear into Laredo. What are you going to do? I'm going back to that shack. You can't be serious. Well, I can't leave Doc there. Jones decides to die, it's just liable to put a slug in him. And besides, Doc's got to fix my tooth. I don't think I can. Oh, nonsense. Here, now just point that horse and get him going. I'll catch up with you later. Ah! Uh, horse, horse, go. Horse, look that way. No, no, horse, not that way. Go that way. Now, horse, please try to understand. That way. Horse.
Not that way. That way, horse. Look. Don't be such a stupid animal. Go that way. Oh, you stupid animal. Horse, look. Go that way. Oh. Go on, horse. No. Horse. Animal horse, go that way. Horse, please try to understand. <laughs> ha! Look, this way. There. Back there. Go, I tell you. <laughs> nice seeing you again, sir. You're going. Uh, uh, dump this outside? Yes, never mind that. Yeah, but I got to, otherwise it could infect the whole place and everybody in it. Where's Bennett? He got away. <laughs> and he left his friend behind? His friend was having a bit of horse trouble. Couldn't seem to get him started in the right direction. Well, we better go in and tell Anson the bad news. Where's Bennett? Uh, he and, uh, this one made a break while you was out. Dirk managed to catch him, but, uh... Bennett got away? I couldn't help it, Anson. Hey, you dumbbells. You can't do anything right if I'm not watching you every minute. Where's Harry? He ain't back yet. That's great. That's just great. By the time he does get back, Bennett will arrive with every ranger in the territory. Now, that ain't necessarily so, Anson. Harry got a good head start. Uh, I'm gonna need some fresh water. Cold water. What for? Do as he says and quit asking stupid questions. you the same thing. Huh? These two dunderheads let him get away. Probably headed straight for Laredo. He sure wasn't there when I left. Uh, maybe that gives us a little time to get out of here. Now you go moving around, you're liable to start that bleeding again. I'm still here. When Bennett gets back with those rangers, I'm liable to do a little bleeding, too. All right. But I'm warning you, if you don't lie still, I won't be responsible for what happens to you. You better be responsible. What I said before still goes. When I stop breathing, you stop too. Now, come on, let's get out of here. What about him? He goes with us. But the ransom's been paid. Don't you intend to honor your part of the agreement? All I intended to do was put a bullet in Bennett's head. Since he got away, I might just spend that bullet on you instead. You'd actually consider killing me for no reason at all? Oh, that'd be reason enough. I figured they'd find you dead. 
Ben will pay a dear price for leaving you behind. All right, come on, let's move. <laughs> How very barbaric of me. Pringle, that was downright neighborly of you. <laughs> Here, keep an eye on him. What, me? Yeah, you. Doc, I, I know this don't hardly seem the time for it, but you just got to look at this tooth. He whacked me one. And, Doc, I think I'm going to die. I can't help you, Reese. Well, what do you mean you can't help me? I came all the way here. My arm's there. busted, Reese. What? Just before he hits you, he hit me. Uh, Dog, she's busted, all right. Oh. No. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, they didn't know, but it was rather an unusual experience. All right, Reese, start talking. Well, first off, Captain, there's the $200 it took from Jones and them other three. Right maybe there. You better count that, Captain. Yeah, maybe you better, Sheriff. The fellow that rode out of town with us told some wild story about you walking right into their camp after you had tangled with them the night before. Now, as stupid as it sounds, he said that you followed him and Doc Severson to Daggett so Doc could have a look at your toothache. He, uh, he said that, huh? Uh, Captain Parmalee, the truth of the matter is, it was I who insisted on looking for Dr. Severance. You, Mr. Pringle? Well, of course. After all, uh, Reese had defended us so courageously the night before, it would have been unforgivable of me to let him go on without medical relief, as it were. And his jaw was terribly swollen. Reese, let me see. Well, it doesn't look swollen now. Hey! It went down! That must have been when Harry hit you, Reese. It must have uh, broken everything loose. That's it, Captain. Harry did it. That tooth got cured while I was pursuing my duty. Oh, brother. Excuse me. I've heard about enough of this. So have I. Mr. Pringle, I, I want to thank you for that little white lie. <laughs> you may have the clumsiest grammar I've ever heard, Reese, but when the chips are down, you move with the strength and the grace of a, a Greek god. Oh, now, Mr. Pringle. Well. Oh, Mr. Pringle. Mr. Pringle. We want you to come with us. We want to hear every, every dinner. Every little thing. Oh, Captain, yeah, I got a feeling you think I've been exaggerating to you. I think I'd use a stronger word, Reese. Yeah, like lion. Well, you all heard what Pringle had to say. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't think he's a liar, too, do you? <sighs> a lot of sympathy I get from my friends. Like it had died of poisoning out there for all you to care. Well, I'm glad I found out your true colors right now before it was too late. I could just see it now someday on my headstone. Here lies Reese Bennett, who died alone and unloved. A man who had nothing in his heart but good for all. A man who had uh, crawled across the... Them Al Hoots took my gold, $2,000. Where was your rangers while they were stealing it? You just answer me that. Now, where were they? Just tell me that one time. Now, they can't be everywhere at once. I didn't say everywhere. Just out on the East Trail when them six oh, main... Oh, just settle down, Press. We'll pick up the trail in the morning, and we'll find them. Yeah, sure, you'll find them. 
Right before they get to Mexico and spend my gold. Morning. What's the matter with sending some rangers out right now while the trail is still hot? Now, who do you know that can pick up a trail at night? It ain't my business to know. It's yours. It can't be done. How do you know unless you got men out of trying? For all you know, them owl hoots might still be out there right now. Now, a minute ago, you had them on their way to Mexico. Captain, what am I supposed to do about now, Reese? You might as well talk to him, Parmer Lee. You ain't doing me no good. <laughs> you look like you've been shot at and hit, Press. I was. Go up in the barracks, Reese. Well, now, that'd be just fine. If I could get past Joe Peavy, he's sitting outside in his buckboard, hopping mad, wanting to know what we're going to do about them Prepton boys. Now, what are we going to do, Captain? Well, what did they do? Peavy says they're overbranding these cows. Oh, uh, tell him we'll look into it. Well, already done that. He wants to know when. Tell him Buckmeister and Watson will be at his place tomorrow. Thank you, Captain. Now, uh, wh wh what about him, Parmer Lee? He's always saying that there ain't nothing that the Rangers can't do. Fact is, there ain't a single Ranger in this state knows how to track at night now, is there, Reese? Well, now, Joe Riley could track a flying bird just by the tracks this dang shadow makes. And that's for sure, Press. Reese? Well, he can, Captain. Remember all them times everybody give up on finding the trail? And old Joe, he, he sniffed it right out. Move out, Reese. Sure, Captain. Be good to yourself, Press. Now, what about Joe Riley? He is the best tracker I've got. And I guess if any man could pick up a trail at night, he's it. All right, Press, I'll send him out. Well, if someone had 2,500 of your gold. Now, wait a minute. I ain't a putting up no reward. No need to. Now get your carcass out of here and go to bed like the doctor ordered, or I'll start charging you rent on that chair. I'll be back in the morning. Yeah. United States for five greens. This is the place of the country north from the North River. And east of the summits of the big horn lines. Howdy. Howdy. Duffy gets his window busted. Wants to jail little Charlie Crestford. Them Crepton boys been burning their brand over Joe Peavy's. And Press Wasco gets held up and shot. Boy, if this ain't been a day, I'll let a Mustang kick me in the head. And old Press, he's down there in Parmer Lee's office chewing up his suspender buttons. Oh, Reese, you know what you are? You're a walking newspaper. Yeah. Hey! Hey, what? Do you? Do you know what tomorrow is? Payday is a week from tomorrow. That ain't what I mean. Don't the two of you recollect nothing? It happened four years ago. Four years ago? Oh, Reese, I wasn't even in Laredo four years ago. Me neither, Reese. Four years ago tomorrow, Captain Parmley took over this company. Whee. Don't hardly seem that long, does it, Chad? That ain't the important thing. That's not the important thing at all. Seems to me it was more like three years, Joe. Well, he was here when I got here. Well, that's three years, ain't it? And two months. Captain's been here four years. Hmm. Now, what in the blue blazes difference does that make? Don't it mean nothing to you two that the captain's been well, just Well, now, maybe we ought to jump down off our bunks and fire off a 44 or something, huh? Yeah, oh, oh, oh maybe, maybe we could hoop or holler something for you, huh, Reese? Hmm. You think you're about the two funniest wise acres in the state of Texas, don't you? Well, if it was me, that's just what I'd do. Have him a party's what I'd do. Well, why don't you do that, Reese? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not the onlyest one in the company. Well, shucks, it, Reese, it wouldn't make no difference to me if I figured the captain ought to have a party. If, if just me and him was the only ones that was there, I'd go ahead and give it. That's right, Reese. Why, why don't you know it's the thought that's the important thing? You ain't got to give me no lessons. Oh, you know what you ought to have there? Them two new girls from the Laredo Saloon to act as the entertainment. We sure keep things lively. Yeah, and champagne. Now, where'd I get champagne? Uh, it's a shame we ain't been paid yet, ain't it? Oh, I know what you can do. Go out to old dude Meeker Still, and he'd let you have a couple of gallons of his moonshine on the cuff. You gonna have a cake for the Captain Reese? When I give a party, I don't leave nothing out. Why, well, I'm gonna have him the biggest cake ever was. Where are you going, Reese? Out to see dude about that moonshine. <laughs> Oh, Reese. 
Chad and Joe in the barracks? Yep, Captain, that's where they are, up in the barracks. Just kind of resting. They're both up there, sir. Yes, sir. What are you up to, Reese? Who, me? Well, well, nothing, Captain. No, sir, I ain't up to one single solitary thing. And you can bank on that. No, sir, I ain't, Captain. I'm glad to hear that, Reese. Go get Chad and Joe. I've got a job for the three of you. Yes, sir, Captain. I know that face from some... I don't know who he is. Me neither. Mean looking, ain't he? You know, I bet he paid $40 for them boots. Keep an eye on him. Well, how can we do that? If we have to go ride that East Trail looking for them outlaws that robbed old Press Wasco of his gold. Reese, you stay in town. My pleasure, Captain. And if anything happens, let me know. I surely will, Ken. Well, I guess I handle that right enough, huh? You know, Reese, uh, back where I come from, we used to call that apple polishing. Now, you got another word for it, Joe? Uh, that's good enough. I wasn't polishing no apples. N you know, I'm wondering, Joe, if maybe that's the same reason he's so intent on giving the captain an anniversary party. Could be. Well, it ain't. The captain's been a, a good captain for the company, ain't he? Yeah, he has. And ain't he just about the lonesomest man in this whole town? Shucks, I don't know about that. He's got some lady friends I wouldn't mind having myself. True. Well, you can't live by bread itself. He ain't got no, no partners like we had. And he ain't got nobody to have a good scrap with when he gets a feeling like it. Got all the worries and, and none of the good parts of being a ranger. So I, I figured the least we could do is have him a party once a year. Well, he's right, Joe. You're right, Reese. Now, you two looky here just one time. Dude Maker Still is out near the East Trail. So on your way out... Glad to do it, Reese. We'll pick up your three gallons of the best. Here, put it on. Your beer. Well, uh, ain't you two pitching in nothing? No, Reese, is that a nice question to ask? Of course it is. Yeah, I guess it is. I'd say it is. <laughs> Someday, someday. Here. I don't know who he was. Hey, where is everybody? It ain't that late. Well, he just walked in here, glanced around a little bit, and started to sit down. And before his britches touched that chair, the place was empty. You know, he is the meanest man I have ever seen in all my life. He gives Seth Markey a look, sobered him up, one, two, three, just like that. You know, Cyril, I ain't never seen old Seth sober. Well, he's sober now, and you better believe it. Well, you just tell the folks ain't no need to be worrying about that fella. We can handle him. Meantime, tell your cook I want a big cake for tomorrow. About oh so big, but so chocolate with lots of icing. Can't be did, Reese. Huh? You see, the cook quit right after supper. She found herself a man and run off and got married. Well, who am I going to get to bake that cake for tomorrow? I don't know, Reese. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I'll be needing them two dancing girls you just brought in, oh, for about, uh, about, say, an hour. Can't be did, Reese. Well, now, you ain't gonna tell me they ran off and got married, too. No, but them two are my attractions, and I ain't letting them run off doing work now. I only want them for an hour. Can't be did, Reese. Cyril, how many fights you figure you have in here in a week? Fifteen, maybe twenty, if my business is good. Well, the next one comes along, you break it up yourself because I ain't coming to do it for you. That's blackmail, Reese. No, it ain't just getting even. 
That's just as bad. Now, for the last time, Cyril, can I have those two dancing girls tomorrow? All right, all right. You can have them, but the next time there's a... Fight, you better come a run instead of walking, or you and me is done being friends. Well, that, uh, that sounds fair enough, Cyril. Hey, would you like a beer or something, Reese? Oh, no thanks, Cyril. I, uh, I gotta be looking to that fella that just left you. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> Is Kelly, Mike Kelly. That's how he signed in over to hotel. I saw his face on a wanted poster, a newspaper, or somewhere. Yeah, he at the hotel now. Yeah, yeah. Got a room on the second floor at the front. All right, you take the east trail. If Joe and Chad haven't picked up any tracks, tell them to come on in, get some sleep, get a fresh start in the morning. Well, uh, uh, maybe we ought to let him keep looking for a while, Captain. Outdoors is good for him. All that fresh air and everything. Reese. Yes, sir, Captain. Oh, uh, Captain. Yeah? Uh, uh, Cyril over at the Laredo Saloon, he, uh, he lost his cook. And, uh, he was wondering if you knew anybody might, might fill in till he got another. I want somebody that bakes a good chocolate cake. Well, not right off, but if I think of somebody, I'll tell him. Well, it's, uh, it's kind of important, Captain. I mean, for Cyril, that is. If I think of somebody, I'll tell him. Got to be able to make a good cake, Captain. All right, Reese, now move out. Sure, Captain. Don't forget now about that cook, Reese. Evening, Captain. See a blame thing, Cactus. We're in blazing, you figure they got to. Uh, how are we supposed to find them? Joe's the only one can track at night. Yeah, I could I could be back getting things ready for the captain's party. And what am I doing instead, huh? Nothing. Well, we just have to sit here and wait till sun up. Might as well rest yourself, Cactus. We got about three hours with first light. tracks at night, but you had to find them. Captain sent me out to call you in just in case you missed them. We could have had all night to work on the party. I can't help having a good eye, Reese. Well, I could have by Hannah's hat. Uh, how's the party shaping up, Reese? Well, everything would have been just fine if I could have stayed in town. I got, I got those two dancing girls off of Cyril at the saloon. Well, good. 
Did you get the whiskey? Yeah, I'd be ready for us to pick up on the way back. Oh, good. That's just fine and dandy. We got to thinking on it, Reese, so we got us four gallons. Yeah, gonna be some party. What kind of cake you get? Well, I, uh, I didn't get no kind. The cook at the Laredo quit and got married. And I can't think of a, a blessed soul I can get to do it for me. None of the ladies I know are, are much for cooking or nothing. Well, looks like you're gonna have to bake it yourself, Reese. He can't bake a I cake, sure Chad. Well, even if I could, I wouldn't. Not with you two. Wouldn't give me one single minute's peace. Be hoorah on me day and night. Shucks, it ain't gonna be much of a party without a cake. You know, that's a, that's a pure gospel. You're just gonna have to forget the whole thing, Reese. Well, I ain't give up yet. We'll have that cake one how or another, and that's for sure. If Reese says it like that, it, it's got to be true. No, I ain't gonna believe it until I see it. <laughs> Way they probably reached the border, but now let's get back to town. Oh, uh, Reese, the trail's still hot. Let's stick with it. You heard him, Reese. Trail hot. Let's go. Sounds like three guns. That's what I figure. See anything? Not a blamed thing. Up there! Only two fire now. Let's go get them. It ain't gonna take all three of us, Reese. Oh, that's right, Reese. Why don't you head on back to Laredo and crank things up for that party? You've been itching to get on back anyway. Joe and I can handle this without you. No, oh, I leave you two alone. You're just likely to get yourselves all shot up. And them, them no goods would be off and on their way to Mexico. You all is saying how you're tempted to go off and leave us on our own. Well, now's your chance, pard. I think I know what it is, Joe. Reese is afraid he won't be able to come up with that cake, so he wants to stay here. <laughs> And have yourself a good excuse. That must be it, Chad. Ain't no such a thing. Well, Reese, I got $10 says that even if you leave right now, you won't come up with a cake. I'll take that bet. Done. And I'll be wanting cash and not promises needed. Take off. <laughs> I'll go at him from up on the high ground. Be easier if we just move in from the front. Well, you do want to get back to Laredo in one chunk, don't you, Chad? All right, I'll go around here. Slow and easy. Give me a chance to get into place. Joe, you're talking like there's 20 of them. There's only two. It only takes one of them to shoot you, Chad. You draw their fire. I'll go out this way.
Cereal. Morning. You, uh, you hire yourself that new cook? No, not yet, Reese. Well, who am I going to get to bake that blame cake? I don't know, Reese. <laughs> but if you do find a cook, uh, you might mention that I'm looking for one, OK? Yeah. Yeah, sure, sir. I'll do that. Thank you. Hey, Sam! Is that you, Reese? Yeah, it is. I'm kind of busy back here, Reese. Just help yourself, and I'll collect later. Well, uh, Sam, I was wondering if, uh, Sam? I can hear you fine, Reese. Well, uh, I was wondering if maybe, uh, maybe if your missus could, uh, bake me a cake. She's gone off to her sister's. Won't be back for a week or more. No, oh, well, all right, Sam. Say, Sam. I'm still here. You know what kind of stuff goes into a cake? I see reason to. <clears throat> Captain Parmalee, sir. Oh, Yo, Chad, do you, uh, do you find any tracks? No. Caught up with three of them, sir. There's about, uh, 1,500 here, sir. Yeah. You know, they weren't more than six miles from town. We caught up with them. They were just going around the circle, heading back for the Rio. Press said there were, uh, six of them. Well, according to the three, we just locked up, Captain. The other three are gonna meet him in Mexico. Right, write up a report. Right. Oh, one more thing. Uh, does the name Mike Kelly mean anything to either one of you? No, I don't think so. Well, it seems to me, sir, I... Uh... Well, I can't be sure, Captain. Who is he, Captain? Uh, he's that fellow that rode in last night, signed the hotel register, Mike Kelly. Now, there's something about him that sticks in my mind. Uh, if you remember anything, Joe, let me know, will you? Sure will, Captain. on so you don't get that stuff all over you? Never mind all that. I ain't got time for your funny little sayings. Hey, you got some eggshells in there. Well, I'll just see to it that you get the piece that has them in them. You never did think it would see the day. <laughs> well, if you keep jawing, you're going to see it out of two black eyes. You know, I don't hardly think this bowl is going to be big enough for all this reason. Yeah. Well, you two just go off someplace and leave me be. Reese, we're just trying to offer a couple of suggestions. Well, let me offer you a suggestion. Reese, I never did see your man rile as easy as you. Did you, Joe? No, not hardly, Chad. Whew. Well, Reese, now, where are you, you going to cook this thing? In the stove over at the Laredo Saloon. And between all this running off at the mouth, one of you better tell me he stopped off and brung the whiskey. 
Now, would we forget a thing like that? Not hardly. Oh, we wouldn't let you down, Reese. Uh, you asked us to get the whiskey, and we, we got it. Oh, by the way, old dude Meeker told me to tell you that come payday, you owe him eight dollars. Yeah. All right, Joe, uh, you give Reese a hand there, will you? I'll be back later. Good luck. Hey, where are you were going? Oh, I'm going to have myself some breakfast with a young lady friend of my acquaintance. See ya. Hey, Joe. You, uh, you figure this bowl ain't big enough? Well, it sure don't look like it, Reese. Well, here. Talk to you, Parmalee. We uh, got your money back, Press. Oh, well, good, good. <laughs> All 4,000 of it? No, Press. Now, how much did they take from you? Exactly how much? Well, I just told you $4,000. You ain't accusing me of being a liar, are you, Parmalee? Every time you mention a gold, you raise the figure. It started out at 2,000. Well, I wasn't thinking clear. We got back 1,500. I'll take it. Joe, you can't be using that knife. That's for sticking people. Well, I washed it off. How much flour does it say in that paper, Joe? Well, I can't tell if it's a five or a two. You slop so much junk on it here. A two or a five what? Well, I don't know. There's flour and then that there number I can't read. Well, this uh, feels like it weighs about five pounds. Well, this looks like a five. Oh, it, it, it's a two. Boy, I'll tell you true, Joe. I don't know how women can do this every day. Making cakes and pies and bread and all them things. Well, I guess it's kind of like riding, isn't it, Reese? The more you do of it, the easier it gets. Well, I'll tell you, I get my hands on that fella. Ran away with that cook from the Laredo Salon. I'll break his back. Reese, how many, how many more of these vanilla beans do you think I ought to scrape? Well, you better use them all. Sam wasn't too sure about that part of it. Yeah.
Took you long enough to look me up, Parmalee. The name, Kelly, kind of threw me. When I knew you, it was Fallon. We're a long way from El Paso. A lot of years. More than five. Now that I've done my time, you're gonna let me be, right? There are no posters on you. There's no reason for me to do anything else. Well, we've got something to settle, you and me. That's the past. Remember how it was? Me and Marcel hit the bank. You caught me coming down the alley. And you put a bullet in me. Low in the left shoulder. The shot went high. It should have killed you. But you got me smack in the middle. Didn't miss killing me more than half an inch. What do you want in Laredo? Find out which one of us should really be alive. Couldn't think of nothing else these long five years. I won't draw against you, Kelly. And I don't think you'll shoot me down. No. That wouldn't prove a thing. This has got to be you and me. It won't ever happen. What time is it, barkeep? 10.15. Uh, uh, Quarter past. All right, Parmalee. I'll give you an hour to get yourself ready. Quarter after 11, out in the street. I told you before, it won't ever happen. If it ain't quarter past 11 today, it'll be quarter past 11 tomorrow. And in the meantime, I'll take on all comers and I'll let them clear their holsters before I make a move. You've got a lot of prideful men in the Rangers. They'll go first. You're gonna cause a lot of people a lot of grief if you ain't out there in an hour. cake to me. Well, it ain't been baked yet. Well, it still don't look like no cake to me. <laughs> you figure we was born yesterday, Chad. Well, I'm telling you that that Kelly fella called the captain out. So what do you reckon we're supposed to do now, Reese, that he's told us? Grab our hats and go charging down to see the captain about it. And give him time maybe to sprinkle some pepper or something in the cake. And get his three-day stable duty into the bargain. We ain't that dumb, Chad. Every word I've been telling you is the truth. Sure, sure it is, Chad. Now, why don't you go on back and think up another, huh? Oh. Look, if you two fellas don't want to believe me, why don't you stick your head out that window and ask somebody in the street? Mm, sure, and get laughed at like the jackass I'd be for doing it. Oh, that was a good try, Chad. All right, you two just stay here and bake your cake, and I'll see if I can do something to stop this thing myself. Go ahead, bake your cake. <laughs> <laughs> he sure don't like it, none, when one of his schemes don't turn out like he figured, does he? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Joe. Huh? What if he ain't joking? Oh, he gotta be. How come? Well, Reese, it's his kind of joke, and you... And on the other hand, maybe he ain't. We better go see for sure. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna leave this cake here for him to sneak in and mess up, I'll tell you that. Well, you sure can't go walking down the street carrying a bucket full of cake, can you, Reese? Yeah, well, uh, I'll hide it. That's what I'll do, I'll hide it. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll put a lid on it and put it in a rain barrel. All right, let's go. How fast is it? I don't know. 
Chad here come up to barracks and told us Kelly called you out. Oh, always joking, ain't he, Captain? <laughs> Not this time. You mean he really did call you out, sir? And whether I go or not, I want the three of you to stay out of it. Well, uh, ain't he wanted for something someplace? We could lock him up and then he'd be out of the way. Reese. Well, it ain't right him calling you out. Today in particular. One day is the same as another. There is no right day for a gunfight. Captain, them's the truest words I ever heard. And after hearing them, well, sir, if it was me, I just plain wouldn't have nothing to do with it. No, sir, Captain. Right is right, and you're right. Right, 100%. Yes, sir, Captain. Reese, if it was you he called out, you'd be out in the street waiting for him right now. We both know it. Well, now, I ain't so sure, Captain. I am. Now, to be on the safe side, I think we ought to pass the word, keep everybody off the street, away from windows. I don't want anybody hit with a stray bullet. Go pass the word. Yes, sir. <clears throat> what time are you meeting him, Captain? Quarter after 11. Where's he awaiting? Laredo Saloon. Well, he can't be too smart, sir. He's letting you have the sun at your back. Maybe he's so good it don't matter to him where the sun is. I, uh, guess I said a dumb thing. Uh, huh? Come on, Reese. Well, maybe he just won't meet him at all. Sure he will. Just like you would or I would. He ain't got no choice. Ranger can't back down, because if he does, he hurts all the rangers. That's right. He's got no choice at all. But what are we going to do about it? I guess we'll just have to hope that Parma leaves faster than he is. Well, that ain't much to be doing. I'm not taking anything away from the captain, but a man that looks as mean as Kelly's got to be fast just to stay alive. Well, I'm going to do something. That Kelly will have to step over me to get to the captain. Reese, would you want anybody butting in in your fights? Well, if I was stuck behind a desk for four long years, I might not want it, but I'd sure need it. The captain doesn't get out on assignments much. And being just a little bit rusty's all it takes. That's all it takes. Captain's a dead ranger he walks out in that street. That's a pure gospel. Well, you two could just stand here, but I ain't. No, for once he's right. Well, you better tag along, Chad. Reese! Ain't no use of talking. I ain't gonna let that Reese, come out. what do you plan on doing? Call him out. Well, what about the captain? What about him? Reese, you're only gonna leave him one thing left to think, and that's we got no faith in him. Well, I got faith in him, all right. It's his draw I got my doubts about. It ain't no good, Reese. It's no good stepping between them. It ain't, Reese. The thing we have to do is talk Kelly out of it. He knows if he guns down the captain, he's gonna have us to face, one at a time. Now you know we can't talk no gunfighter out of a fight he's already said he's going into. Now that depends, Reese, on what you say and how you say it. Let's go. Sure is a cool 180. Yeah, he looks it. Looking ain't been. That's right. Yeah, that is right. Hey, Reese. Uh-huh. You gave up that idea of yours, didn't you? What idea? Oh, about shooting that fella down from behind? 
What did folks say? Well, I, I don't say no go f- on about it, Reese. Back shooting a man never was a way to settle anything. Sure works, Fisher. Yeah, but you wouldn't even do that to a snake. Well, you don't let a rattlesnake get the first bite, do you? Give him a chance to, to, to dig his teeth into your leg? You get him first. Well, now that's true enough, Reese. But shooting a man down... He ain't no behind. man, he's a snake. I can't argue that. Of course you can't. Because what I said is true. I guess it is. Yeah, I guess it is. All right, then. Don't argue with me none. I've been thinking, Reese. I'm with you. I figure if anybody guns him down, ought to be me. Was my idea. All three of us, then. That's fair enough. Well, uh, all right. Hey there. What time you got, Killy? It's 14 after. Gun him down from behind, are you? Only just in the foot or something. You can't do that, Reese. Put it away. It's your fight to make, Kelly. Start whenever you're ready. I'll count three, and we go. 
done. One. Two. Shake your hand. Oh, what you've done this morning. Captain, that's what I call raging. I ain't never seen the like of it. And it ain't likely I ever will again, either. Reese, did you have anything Oh, to... you was a sight to behold, Captain. A genuine sight to behold. Reese, could we have run that Kelly off? Huh? No, sir, Reese. And you can stake your morning hash on that, no mistake. Oh, what you done to him, Captain. Look at him dead in the eye. You stared him right down into the ground. That's what you've done. That's the truth, uh, Captain. Reese did. Oh, and there he was, mean and ornery looking, looking as, as old Lucifer himself, that Kelly. And there you was. Oh, Captain, there you was, just, just a looking at him, never turning a hair, cool as ice, and, and telling him to turn around and, and ride out, ride out, just like that. Tell him without saying one word. Oh, Captain, you was something. You was just really something. All right, now did the three of you. Uh, Captain, we got something outside we'd like to show you. <clears throat> Captain, all of the men of the company take it a genuine honor to be working with you. Now, if you just stand there one minute while we go out and get something, huh? One minute. Uh, What's that corner? Uh, uh. Happy anniversary, Captain. Four years today. Tomorrow, Reese. Tomorrow. Well, now, that can't be. Captain, do you mind if, if we have the party a day early? <laughs> <That's good. laughs> 